When I first got here, we had uh, two distinct ways of operating. Uh, the, the large chapel had a motorised screen, it had a projector, and it had a certain amount of technology. The small chapel, we had to wheel out uh, a large screen TV before the start of the service, hook up a laptop to it, and then during the service, a member of the family or a close friend had to operate the laptop to show the slideshow. We had a few problems. Uh, on several occasions, I had to go out into the service and put it right. So yeah, um, we've seen a big change. So I've been here nearly three years now and I've, I've seen the systems change through here. When I first appeared here, we had one room just installed and we had a pretty antiquated system that looked like it was from Motat. So we had to really think hard about what we need to do and we really needed to upgrade our technology to move with the times, really. So the scope that was given to us originally by Cliff was he was committed to having technology installed. Um, obviously we needed to create something that was a lot easier for them to use. Uh, there was a lot of legacy equipment in there with a lot of dials, uh, bells and whistles I guess you could call them, and we wanted to create something that was easy for the funeral directors and his staff to run a service uh, without the stress and the complications of uh, a whole lot of gear. Uh, we can watch what the funeral directors are doing, uh, we can watch what the celebrants are doing, we can, we just are able to monitor the service a lot better than we could do before. We can see and hear everything now. Oh, this is wonderful. It's so much easier than what we had before. There's no more turning dials, we've got one interface, all touch screen, everything's controlled from one screen. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, most of the efficiencies are during the service. Um, the recordings are happening uh, and the recordings now are, are straight onto an SD card so they're available immediately after the service. That's a big difference. The efficiencies are that we don't make mistakes because we can see, because we can hear. Every service is different. Uh, some services the celebrant will be cueing us as to what to do. It might be a case of Point to, the, point to the screen and a new slide appears. We manually advance the slides. There's any number of ways, uh, but if we can monitor better and listen better, the public get a better service. So I guess once we got started, we identified that there were a lot of things that we could do for Cliff um, with the HDMI equipment that we had at our fingertips. Um, and presenting screens and having screens in various places throughout the complex so that all the staff could watch what was going on in each of the areas, uh, in each of the chapels, and of course monitor what was going on throughout the services. And it was like a cue for them so they understood you know, what was going on in the service in the room without peering through the doors. Uh, and that made a big difference to how these guys run their services. As far as controlling uh, the sounds, the screens, um, it's, all, it's a one-stop shop. What we've got here is we've got a touch screen and we have presets for, for all the volumes. So depending on which device or which media I'm using, be it the laptop, be it the DVD player, or be it a CD player. If it's CD, I press the CD button, it goes up to a preset. Obviously we get a lot of music that are burnt onto discs. They're all at different volumes. So the preset is adjustable. It goes to the preset if myself or, or the family member think it's too loud or not loud enough, we have the option to manually lift it or gently lift or gently fade. We use these an awful lot just to tweak the sound. Um, also again there's no wall switches. If I want to drop the screen in the chapel just press the down button the screen goes down. All done from one place. Um, we tend to use the small chapel quite a lot as an overflow for the large chapel. So what happens is that the large chapel's full, lots and lots of people are standing outside. So what we'll do is press All Saints and then what's happening in All Saints shows up on the screen in All Souls in the small chapel. So people can come in, sit down, They've got aircon and they can watch the service from next door without overheating outside. So we spent a lot of time with the guys that supported us, Murray from Ambertech and, and Dan from Now Sound, 
the main challenges we had was getting everything to work together. We had some legacy equipment in here, uh, the curtains and the drop down screens, we had some new equipment and we also implemented some new equipment on top of that with QSIS and the QSC gear and also with the Giffen gear that we've put in place uh, just so that everything would talk together and we could control it and bring it to that one platform. One of the products that we've chosen is, is Geffen and, and it's a, a very strong international brand. It's sort of the mainstay of most television stations and, and professional houses. So we started with a professional format. Um, it's, it's got the ability to be able to be controlled or adapted uh, by an external source and with the QSIS control system we're able, actually able to tell the Geffen product how to do and, and how to switch and what to do. So it actually worked very, very well with the, with the fine output that we ended up using. So we've implemented an amplifier which is the heart and soul of the control system uh, and we've basically put that together with a full HDMI matrix which allows us to have different images in different areas throughout the whole facility. Uh, it also allows us to have the overflow facility um, so if the weather's bad in one area and we're, we're chock-a-block in one of the chapels we can move people into these other areas and use the technology that we've put in place around the HDMI matrixes and of course our high definition cameras and present those images from different chapels into different areas. Uh, in the future we're looking at bringing both the lounges online so that we've got that overflow facility in those areas as well. So it could be that the weather's too hot or you know it's bad weather and we've got people standing out in the rain. One of the things that we talked about was a lot of times you go to a funeral service and you end up standing outside and you can't hear what's going on and you can't see what's going on and that was one of the challenges that we wanted to meet was to give Cliff the ability to move people around within the facility so that they all got to see and hear what was going on as part of the service. I've had nothing but um, oohs and ahs really when, when I've taken people into the sound room to test their slideshow pre-service uh, they are to every single one of them is pretty amazed at what we're looking at here it, they really do get blown away by it and, and what we've got now is fully streamlined HD high quality and everything just everything is quite easily integrated we have families come in with all sorts of technology easy enough to plug and play the way it goes we've had virtually no issues whatsoever with the new technology. One Room has been really, really good as far as setting up the, 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 the One Room and, and the actual e-funeral technology and being able to send um, that information out to families and, and, and relations uh, anywhere in the world. We've got a system that uh, automates the webcasting and recording of uh, funerals so that you can watch them live or record it online to go back and watch them later. Um, the value of this is for the people who can't make it to the funeral service, uh, they're able to, uh, to catch up with the, the service later, um, or even for people who've been to the service um, to view again after the fact and, and get value out of what was said on the day. Okay, so once the, the service is scheduled, um, an invite is generated and sent to anyone who's named in the system that, uh, that is a, a primary family member who wants to view the service. They receive the invitation and from there they can choose to forward it on to anyone that, that they'd like to invite to the service um, and later on they have the option of, uh, of downloading the links from the recording so that they can have that on their own PC or hard drive. Um, then when someone, when a guest receives the invitation all they really need to do is just click on the, on the view here button and that takes them straight into the chapel. So at Periwa, the main camera um, is focused where the, where the speaker um, would be. Uh, but you can go down here and change between views. So um, if you're interested in, in who's attending or you want to see the family members, you can change between that camera um, or uh, you know, any of the other perspectives that Periwa provide. Once you're viewing the service, uh, if you're viewing it as an archive um, after the fact, you can uh, operate the scroll bar and take this to any point in the service, um, pop it out to full screen, uh, and you can view the service uh, in, in HD quality. So the idea is we've, we've simplified the whole experience. Um, uh, from the funeral director's perspective, it's, it's all automated. They don't have to touch any cameras. Uh, they just schedule it into a, into a system and the cameras operate and record automatically. 
children, young adults that have just gone overseas to do the big OE. Um, and all of a sudden Nan or Pop's died, they can't come back because they can't financially do that. If they can log into anything now, they can do it on the iPhone, they can do it on the iPad, they can do it on their tablet, they can do it on their laptop, they can do it on their computer, wherever they are, wherever they are in the world, they can log in and they can watch that funeral on the internet. Um, um, and, and we are the only facility in, in New Zealand that can actually do that. It's a case of knowing who to talk to, I guess getting the consultants in, that can advise you from everything from a microphone or to the right sort of projectors or cameras or, or whatever, and then working through a layered build or through a through a timed project. So it, it's not difficult. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it does have to be thought. And, and there's got to be a little bit of time put into looking at how, how you're going to do it and what you can afford to do it at any time. We've done a lot of research and we've spent a lot of time working on this stuff, getting it working. And for us, it was, it had to be commercial grade and it had to work every single time. Uh, there's no room for failure uh, for friends and family when they're at a service. It's important to them that things run smoothly. It's important to Cliff and his staff that everything goes as it should do. So the componentry that we've put in place does that every time. I guess when you look at the whole project, what we've got is first and foremost, we've got a recording system that will broadcast the, the, the service out to the rest of the world. It will also record that service. It will screen that service and the PowerPoint presentations or the photographic slides up onto the screen behind it during the live service. And you can even use that service for overflow out to the other rooms. At the same time, you can watch and, and monitor those services from the administration building or down by the, uh, by the, um, the family rooms and the, other, and the other venues on the facility. All of this can work together. It's quite a huge project that we've actually pulled a bit here and a bit there, and we've pulled all of them into the one central location. So when you look at the overall scope of the whole project, we're not looking at just a sound system or just a couple of cameras. We're actually looking at a really big coordinated uh, project from, from so many different levels. So the, the first real difficulty we had was we've got several buildings in the complex. Uh, there had been some fibre installed. Uh, and we needed to find products that would allow us to run our high definition cameras and monitors in these different buildings over the cabling that was already in the ground, i.e. the fibre. So that was the main challenge we had initially when we started the project was what are we going to use, what gear are we going to use and how are we going to do this within a you know, reasonable sort of a budget uh, and have it so that it's rock solid and you know, basically future proof so that what we installed would allow us to add on to that in the future. Um, obviously with the new lounge coming on board, with the existing lounge and the existing administration office, we wanted the ability to have the cameras and the images in all three buildings, uh, audio and visual, so that these guys could hear what was going on in the services and you know prompt the ladies in the lounges to, to prep up for the tea uh, and after the services and also give management a view on what was going on in the chapels as it was happening. So the great thing about this is that it's future-proof, so along the lines of as, as technology does improve and other things become obsolete, we know that the system here can be upgraded to keep with the times. What we've chosen to use here is actually very, very much state-of-the-art. Um, it's only been possible probably within the last 12 or 18 months to, to even do the project at a reasonable budget. In the past it would have cost tens of thousands of dollars just to get the image from one end of the campus or from one end of the, of the venue to the other. Um, everything high definition sort of changes the way we used to do things. So new technologies has given an opportunity to extend and split and distribute the video signals around the whole, the whole pro uh, property and to make it as interactive and as, as easy to operate as it is today. So working, working in the live environment for us obviously uh, provided some challenges. We, we had to work around the services uh, and the bookings that were in place. So we basically had to be in and out around those services uh, and get things done in a timed manner and basically stage the install over a period of months, which allowed us just to introduce a little bit of technology at a time and gave us time with training with uh, Cliff's team. Um, so that everything worked seamlessly and we didn't have any fails or any, you know, um, hiccups on the way. And from what we've heard, everyone, every family that's come through here with their audio-visual 
presentations have been very happy with the quality that's come through and, and for them I think that that's the way they want to see their relatives go out in style.